Give the Lord a clap offering, a better clap offering. If you are excited and the life of God is in you and you believe God has graciously graced your life, 
Clap your hands to the Lord and celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Let me hear a shout of praise. A shout of praise. A shout of praise. Hallelujah. What a blessing. We thank the Lord for tonight. I am so happy. I am so delighted today because my mother is in the house. Our mother is in the house. Hallelujah. But before she comes, I want to make um, a little introduction of a few pastors around. Um, I have one of my friends. We went to the Trinity Theological Seminary together. He's been a very good friend of mine. Um, he has a ministry in Tema. Let's clap our hands and acknowledge the presence of Reverend Ebenezer Commodore from the Engagement Worship Center. God bless you. God bless you. I also have my good friend, um, Reverend Philip Banini from the Hilltop Church, a shaman, a very powerful man of God. God bless you for coming. I also have a very good friend of mine, Prophet Damali Dyson from the Testimony Arena Church. God bless you. And I welcome all the pastors here. God bless you for your presence. And clap your hands for yourselves for also being here. It's a blessing to have all of you here at the Blessed Marriage Conference. Amen. Um, tonight we are so blessed. I believe that God has graced us. And, um, you know, um, about 27 years ago, I started my Christian journey in um, Royal House Chapel, then International Bible Worship Center at Kokumlimli. I got born again. I was just around 16 years old. I got born again there. I got baptized there. I went through foundation school, completed everything. Hallelujah. And it has been my house. Hallelujah. I have learned so many things. The Apostle General has been a blessing to me. Every year, he pronounces blessings over my life and my family. And I'm so gracious to Mama Rita because every time we go there, she gives us a warm welcome. She hugs us. She blesses us. I mean, she's a mother. She's a mother. And we are so happy to have a mother like her. Hallelujah. There's going to be a short introduction via the screens. So um, I want us to stay back listen to the introduction, then we welcome her to come and minister the word to us and also pray for us. Can it roll? Clap your hands, clap your hands to the Lord. Celebrate the woman of God. Celebrate the grace of God. Celebrate the woman of God. Celebrate the grace of God. The Lord has been good. For us to have, you know, I was monitoring the, the Vals Day um, program that they had. It was, it was so powerful. I was listening to the preaching. I was listening to the testimonies. And many questions were being asked. And she was answering the questions. I said, this woman is so graced. This woman is so endowed with the wisdom of God. So let's let's listen to the introduction. When I found you, I found love. You fall seven times, you will rise up again. I have come to let you know that which killed your grandfather, that which killed your grandmother, that which killed your father and killed your mother, minus you. Minus here to help you to activate grace over your life. My darling, you are hiding under covering. You are hiding under protection. I said minus you. The altar of your father is speaking for you. If there is anything I'm praying for this morning, I'm praying for grace. And tonight, we are blessed because God has brought our mother here a woman of grace who has impacted many homes and marriages across the nations of the world. She has been married for 38 years and counting. 
She is the wife of our one and only Apostle General Sam Karantri Ankara, our father. She is the president of the Royal Ladies, the Women's Wing of the Royal House Chapel International, and holds conferences with over 5,000 women in attendance. She is the host of the Family Life Show on Powerline TV. So tonight, giving honor to whom honor is due, let's make welcome a woman of grace, a mother of mothers, a teacher, a mentor, the premier lady of the Royal House Chapel International, our one and only Mama Rita Karanchi Ankara. When I found you, I found love. When I found you, I found love. I'm to tell you. Good evening, everyone. I want to hear you. Good evening, everyone. How are you today? Are you still celebrating Valentine? Valentine is actually something that is supposed to be celebrated on a daily basis. But you see, it's been discovered that if there's no day called Valentine, in other words, if there's no day that you are celebrating love, people will totally forget love. So there's a day called Valentine. So that throughout the year, if you forget, there's a word called love. You will remember it. Are you ready? So this evening is supposed to be Valentine service. In other words, love service. And I'm trusting God that by the time I leave here, I would have injected you with a virus called love. to this church and you don't end up in the university then where you are coming from is far away this is a church of academicians and once you become a part of this church you must strive to go to school shall we honor reverend and reverend mrs doctor and lawyer 
fear will. Please be seated. I honor you. Incidentally, Mama MFA is my daughter's mate at the law school. Was it law school or Legon? Mokola. Oh, Legon. And then Mokola. Wow. So they were in Legon together and then moved, which we call Mokola. I pray lawyers in this church. And I pray doctors in this church. I have two lawyers in my house. One I don't have that I really wanted was, was a doctor. But I pray that my grandchildren will become doctors. I wanted a lawyer. I wanted a, a doctor. I wanted an engineer. I wanted an accountant. I wanted pastors. All of them are pastors. But I'm trusting God for it. I think I'm carrying the, the doctor anointing from here into my home. Amen. And all the pastors here and all the great men here, I honor you and welcome to, this is your first, the first ever had blessed marriage conference. Blessed marriage conference. So I want to welcome each one of you to the blessed marriage conference. This is the first, but it's not going to be the last. This is going to be a yearly program. And I see it growing from grace to grace. I see it growing from numbers to numbers. I see it growing from glory to glory. I see marriage vows being renewed here at this conference. I see marriages being blessed at this conference. I see children coming out of this conference. If you believe it, say amen. amen. I want to bring you greetings from my father, my husband, my boss, my spiritual father, my mentor, my boyfriend, the sugar in my tea, the granules in my Usa cocoa, the dawadawa in my okra stew, the wele on my watch. I want to bring you greetings from him, and he's asked me to bring him reports of what his son and daughter are doing, and I'm going to send a very good report. My delivery this evening is how to develop friendship in your marriage. How to develop friendship in your marriage. You can also decide to make it friendship in your relationship or friendship in your courtship if, if you are in courtship and you are not yet married. So developing friendship in your relationship or friendship in your marriage. I have come to learn the friendship is the greatest gift that God gives to us. My darling, if you are here and you don't have a friend, then you are in trouble. By my experience, over the decades of marriage, listen carefully to me, romance will fade away. Love will fade away. But friendship never fades away in marriage. Why do people divorce? People divorce because romance is out of the relationship. People divorce because love is out of the relationship. 
But then, the people who never divorce, like my husband and I, is because there's friendship in the relationship. Say friendship. Research shows the couples who are friends are happier. They feel safer. They value each other and are healthier than those who are not. In other words, those who are not friends in the relationship. Research also shows that friendship in marriage is five times more important than physical intimacy. Friendship in marriage is five times more important than physical intimacy. Proverbs 17, verse 17. Proverbs 17, verse 17. A friend laughs at all times. A friend laughs at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. A friend laughs at all times. So you see, if you are looking for love in a relationship, if you are looking for love in marriage, first look for friendship. I always ask young people when they come to me, are you friends? My darling, sometimes what we think is love, is not even love. What is it? Last, or what does the world call it? Yes, yeah, somebody mentioned it. Infatuation. When you see somebody and you feel like her lip caught eyes in your heart. When you feel like there's, there's some thunderstorm through your blood. My darling, it is not love. Friendship. Everybody say friendship. But this is what I want to tell my congregation or my audience this evening. The friendship is not automatic. Friendship doesn't just come. You must work at it. Friendship is not like cocoa you are drinking. You must be intentional about friendship. There's so much stress in our marriages today. Why? People are married. They are working. Like Dr. Fiau, he's married. He's a father. He's a pastor. He's a doctor. My darling, it can be very, very stressful. Very, very stressful. Mama MFA is a lawyer, goes to court, writes reports, comes home, three boys, two. Oh, two boys, one girl. And that is not easy. Oh. Some people are going to school, five full time jobs. It can be very, very stressful. That is why you need friendship in the relationship. When you are coming home, you must come home not to just a husband. You must come home not to just a wife, but you must come home to your friend. Are we there? Ways to build friendship in your relationship. Ways to build friendship in your relationship. Number one, establish a time 
each week to spend quality time together. Establish a time and a day each week to spend quality time together. I said friendship is not automatic. You must work at it. Let your time together be devoid of quarrels. Let it be devoid of arguments. Let the time together be a happy hour for the two of you. Anybody who has been to my house will tell you I'm a lover of plants. My house is beautiful because of the plants I have. I have different kinds of plants. My darling, when you come to my house and you say, oh, these plants are very beautiful. My darling, they are beautiful and they are healthy because number one, I put energy into the plants. Number two, I put time into the plants. Number three, I put care into the plants. I have roses and I have orchids. And I have a rose garden. And within the rose garden, I also have orchids. But I discovered that my roses are not doing well. So recently, somebody came home. That person is also into plants. So I was telling the person that my roses are not doing very well. And the person said, oh, roses are very jealous plants. And they don't like competition. And the fact that my orchids are part of it in the same bed is not making it do well. They don't like competition. They will leave you for you to blossom. And they will be, I went to my roses. I said, hey, life is about competition. I said, life is about competition. I said, I put you both here, you and the orchids. I put you both here for you to do well. You are supposed to bring me laughter. You are supposed to bring me smiles. You are supposed to bring me health. I said from today, I want you to compete with the orchids. I said from today, you will do well. My darling, the following day, I went around doing my prayer work, visited the roses, and I realized that the roses had begun smiling. My darling, I put time. I put words. I put money. I add water. I add, I add plant food. I pamper it. That is what friendship is supposed to be. So when you meet to have quality time, you must pamper each other. You must put words into it. You must put energy into it. You must add water into it. My darling, once you add time, words, energy, pampering, coaction, my darling, trust me, your marriage will blossom like my garden. Is somebody listening to me? What are some of the things you can do during the happy time together? During the quality time together? Number one, you can go for walks. Going for walk free of charge. 
You don't need money to go for work. Are you listening? You can watch a movie or listen to news together. You can play a game together. It's a long time I saw a worry and Ludu. I don't know whether they are lost in the system. But these are things we used to do. Praying together is part of having quality time. Going to church together is part of having quality time. Cooking together. When my husband and I got married, and we didn't have, have, we didn't have house help, nothing, I would be kind the fufu. You know, kind the fufu. And he would be pounding the fufu. It added to our friendship. Washing together. I would do three bowls of water. The first one I will wash. Put it in the second water. He would rewash. The third one would be rinsing. He would rinse and dry it. It added to our love. If you are here, and you leave your wife to do everything. You are a bushman. God have mercy on you. And what annoys me, the men who don't help their wives, and yet they want fresh food every day. Come and marry me, you'll get fresh food. <laughs> Am I darling some numbers? <laughs> My darling, I'm been married for 38 years. My husband and I are very good friends. We are the best of friends. If you ask me who my best friend is, it's my husband. Who my gossiping partner is, it's my husband. Are you listening? It didn't come in a day we worked it out. When I'm cooking, he cuts the onions. Once I start, then he starts cutting the tomatoes, blending. My darling, by the time we are done, I like that. By the time we are done, there's so much friendship. When we come to church, the people I came with will tell you, once we come to church, unless we are going home at different times, but if we are going home together, either I park my car and I jump into his, or I jump into his and somebody follows us with my car. Friendship. Everybody say friendship. Number two, communication. Communication in every relationship is vital to the success of the relationship. Communication in a relationship is like location to business. I read a book where it said, what are the three, the three most important things for any business? And it was written, location, location, location. Location, location, location. So communication in marriage is very important. Communication in marriage is like air or oxygen to the human being. Without air, without breathing, without oxygen, we die. So without communication in any relationship, the relationship dies. 
Communication must be very major in every relationship. When we talk about communication, it sounds huge. My darling, communication is talking. Say it's just talking. Tell the one sitting by you, it's just talking. You must communicate or talk or chat or converse on a daily basis. If you are here and you haven't had good communication with your spouse for a week, I want you to know that the marriage is dying. Somebody came to me one day, a very good friend of mine, and said, ah, when you and your husband meet, what do you talk about? And that looks like every minute, every second, the two of you have something to talk about. The person said, my husband and I, when we talk small, the talking gets finished. How can talking get finished? So when we talk small, the talking gets finished. There's nothing else to talk about. She and the husband married two years after my husband and I. Ask me where the marriage is. They are divorced. Don't downplay communication in the relationship. Don't look down on communication in the relationship. Don't belittle communication in the relationship. How do you communicate? So you see, the more you communicate, the more you know each other. The more you communicate, the more you get attracted to each other. The more you communicate, the more there's bonding between the two of you. How do you communicate? Number one, if you both work at different places, when you come together, talk about your day. Let the husband talk about his day. Doc must talk about the patients that came the ones who were looking for children, the ones who came into his office crying because they've been married for a while without children, and the ones that came back now laughing because now they have twins, they have triplets. They talk about it. The lawyer also talks about when she went to court from the court clerk to the other lawyer, to the judge. My darling, by the time you finish this, it's time to sleep. How can communication get finished? You are talking about the children, talking about the academic work, talking about the teacher that called you, in the school, talking about the PTA you went to, talking about the school fees, talking about their clothes for school. Talk How can communication get finished? My darling, my husband and I, we always sleep late. Why do we sleep late? We sleep late because we are talking and talking. When I go back, I am going to tell him, everybody I saw here, those who are smiling, those who have squeezed their faces, those who said amen, those who said hallelujah, those... All the pastors that came. By the time I'm done, two hours has already gone. Is somebody listening? There must be no day that you both go to work 
that you don't call each other on phone at least once before you come home. How is your day? How is your day going? Is everything okay? I miss you. I can't wait to see you. My darling, friendship. And listen carefully. It doesn't matter how busy you are. When your spouse calls you, pick up the phone. Even when you are with your boss, sorry boss, my husband is calling. I'm not sure if there's an emergency. So you call, honey, I am with my boss. I am with a client. I am with a patient. I am, I'll call you when I'm done. During the day, when you are too busy, the slightest opportunity you have, send a WhatsApp message or send a text message. I'm fine. I hope you are also fine. I can't wait to see you this evening. I love you. Am I talking to some people? You must, you must treat each other's phone call with, 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 with urgency. When they send you a message, don't be one of those. One lawyer I have in the house, not the one I came with. No, not the one I came with. She's at home. I keep telling her, we will share the returns on phone. You will send a message, WhatsApp message, on the family page. She will see it after two weeks. Meanwhile, she's always holding her phone. My darling, friendship must be worked on. Anytime my husband and I go out, when he hasn't heard from me in an hour, two hours, he will call. I will tell him, honey, I'm in, in the midst of counseling. I will call you back. When I also call, he will, honey, my trouble. He meet you going, she can't be now, my trouble. Are you listening? Is somebody learning? I like that. There is no communication in some relationships because the man is not interested in what the woman does. The woman is not interested in what the man does. So when they meet, there is no common ground. There is nothing common between the two of them to talk about. The woman likes Nigerian films. The man is not interested in Nigerian films. So when the woman is talking about the thing she watched on the Nigerian film, the man is not interested. The man is talking about football or talking about CNN. The woman doesn't listen to CNN. Are, are, are we listening? So what you do is that you meet each other on a common ground. My husband plays golf. Every time he goes to play golf, when he comes back, he wants to talk to me about the golf. Talk to me about the ball going into water. Talk to me about the ball hitting something and getting lost. Talking to me about when he goes, his caddy was not there. 
A caddy is somebody who holds your bag. My darling, what did I do? All I had to do was get interested in his golf. Because of him, I started playing golf small. But I couldn't keep up to it. It's not easy. I have too many things to do. I'm checking my jewelry. Checking my kitchen. Checking my shoes. Checking my flowers. Checking my hair. Doing my nails. Doing waxing. What time can I get for golf? But I tried. I played golf for one week. And the one week, I made sure that he felt it, that I was playing golf. That one week, everybody in, my, in the world knew I was playing golf. One week. You should see my T-shirts. You should see my, my shorts. You should see my golf shoes. When he was playing, I made sure I prepared him for the night. Somebody didn't hear me. I went right in front of him, pushed my buttons, held the golf stick. Meanwhile, I don't know inside you. Pushed it like this, went like this. What? He gave me high five on the golf course. After that week, I haven't played again. Are you listening? Naturally, I don't know inside of football. I don't know inside. I have tried to learn football. It's not my thing. I don't know it. But when he's playing, just to have a common ground, for us to communicate. I sit by him. My darling, even when it's not a goal, I'm shouting, it's a goal. Even when my opponents are scoring, I am shouting, it's a Many will blue. Is somebody listening? So because I get interested in what he likes, he also tries to be interested in what I like. Now I come and I discuss my flowers with him. Then I'm talking about my gardeners. The way I drink wine is not watering the flowers well. And Ben is not watering the flowers well. And the way I was expecting Nash to come and supervise and Nash did he also gets interested in mine. Are we listening? So we must meet each other halfway. Those who are failing in their marriages are not clapping. Please let me know when my time is up. 15 minutes to time, let me know. Number three. This is a topic I treated in three or four weeks. So I will leave some out and then give out some. Number three. Treat the relationship as a partnership venture. Treat the relationship as a partnership venture. You are in it together. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Verses 14 and 15. Jesus said to his disciples, and remember that the relationship started like a boss and their subordinates and his subordinates or a teacher and the students. 
but this is what Jesus had to say. Jesus said to his disciples, you are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. I have called you what? My darling, the relationship, the marriage is supposed to be on a partnership basis. There's nothing like my boss. There's nothing like my servant. There's nothing like a second class citizen. We are equal in the relationship. That is why when you are going for a wife or you are going for a husband, you go for someone who is your, is your, is your equal. If you are ready to go for somebody far below you, you must be ready to make the person your equal. I am very sorry if I have to offend anybody here. I don't know anybody here, and I don't know your situation. So I'm very sorry if I have to offend you. That is why I personally encourage people, if you are going for somebody, number one, go for your equal. Say, go for my, your equal. In other words, you must be on the same level. When dog and lawyer meet, because they're on the same social level, there's no way dog will look down upon lawyer, or lawyer will look down upon dog. I am sorry if I'm stepping on some toes. Assuming doctor on his level, went for somebody who only has SSS. He would always look at her with the level of an SSS. I, will, I don't want to say drop out. It's happening. At least, it must be, even if she's not a lawyer, but has a first degree or a diploma from a tertiary, it's fine. You are co-equals. Are we listening? You are a lawyer. You go for somebody who is a carpenter. Unless everybody must have something going for them. Unless the carpenter is extremely rich. Go gas level. So money makes up for the education. Not even anointing makes up not even anointing. A lot of young people are making a mistake. Their fathers have educated them. First degree, second degree. Then they go for a prophet who has never been to school. They hear the person on platform 
with anointing. My darling, you don't marry anointing. The anointing will not be in display in the, in the home, in the house, in the bedroom. Now when you get home, you see the reality. Where the man wears one panties for seven days. Where he's drinking tea. And unfortunately, I'm not saying sometimes these things work. If only the man has a teachable spirit. But some men who have ego and pride, why? Is it because I haven't been to school? You think, even in your talking, when you are humble, they said, Kwe, Nabo Chombo Nakai, Obumu. When you met me, didn't you know I was a man of God? You were a man of God, but you still decided to come to my level. Are we listening? My darling. Tell somebody sitting by you, go for your level. I was telling Apostle General yesterday, I was telling Apostle General yesterday, there's a lady I'm handling, and I don't know how to reason out for her to understand exactly what I'm saying. If for any reason this tape goes anywhere and she hears it, my darling, I am sorry. She got sick. Serious, serious bleeding. That doesn't cease. So eventually, her womb was removed. And so what? According to her, when the young people come and she tells them her womb is removed, they walk away. So now guess what? She's 28 years. She sends me a message. Mama Rita, I have a testimony for you. I have a breakthrough for you. I said, I can't wait to hear the testimony and the breakthrough. Because I've been praying with her all throughout. Somebody has come. I said, praise God. My father's friend. I said, how can your father's friend? Be your future husband. I said, your father's friend is your uncle. You can't be married to your father's friend, your uncle. 28. I said, how old is your father's friend? 56. I said, my darling, this will not work. I said, don't be too hard on yourself. Womb or without womb, you will marry. I said, womb or without womb, you get your type. Womb or without womb, you get your partner. Womb or without womb, you get your equal. I said, forever in this relationship, this man will see you as his daughter. Treat you as a daughter. You are not on the same level. You are not partners. I don't know if there's a young girl here listening to me. You strategically brought them. I said you are not on the same level. When you are talking about computer age, he's talking about 1942. 
When Kwame Nkrumah was put into prison, what do you care about when Kwame Nkrumah was put into prison? To accept, calculate. In 15 years, how old would you be? I said, calculate. In 15 years, how old would he be? I said, in 15 years, you'll be sexually active. You would have reached your climax when it comes to your sex life. In 15 years, that is when he would have decreased. And the anointing will go down him like this. Tell somebody, look for a partner. My darling, we are talking about friendship in relationship. If there must be friendship, if there must be somebody you would enjoy life with, if there's somebody you must enjoy communication with, if there's somebody you must enjoy with, my darling, it must be your friend and nothing else. What we say love will not always be there. Things happen in a relationship when you think that the love is no more. When there's no money, there's no love. When you are pregnant and you are fat, your nose is big, your lips are thick, you are looking very dark. I'm in a hurry to finish with you and go home because I'm going to meet my friends. You go home. When was the last time you had a meaningful conversation with your spouse? I am talking about young ladies who are going for their uncles. They are young men also going for their mother's sisters. Number four, I'll give the last but one, and then you can ask questions. Hey, I have a lot of points. Let your partner feel important. Let your partner feel important. One way to build friendship in the relationship is to make your spouse feel important. You can do things to show that you love, you care, you value, and you appreciate the relationship with them. How do you make your spouse feel important? A gift on their special day. How many husbands here gave gifts to their wives on Valentine? Hmm? I can see guilt on the faces of some men. <laughs> and let's not downplay gifts, the role of gifts in friendship and in relationship. If you have any friend and you are always the one giving and giving and giving and the other person is not giving back, my darling, you get tired. And where there's no gifts, for God so loved the world that he gave. God demonstrated he loved us by giving. If you love the person, you must give. When you give, you cement the relationship. You cemented the friendship. 
How do you make your, your partner feel, feel important? By having surprise parties. Her birthday, surprise her with a party. My darling, when we say a party, we are not saying big party. There can be Kelewele party. There can be Kenke party. There can be Friday and party. There can be Omutuo party. There can be So Bolo party. Are you listening? Few friends. If you are in the same church, on your wife's birthday, on your husband's birthday, bring so bolo to everyone and say, today is my husband's birthday. I want to surprise my husband, my darling. It's not the big thing. It's the little, little things. Is somebody listening? A romantic dinner or lunch. A massage. Me, me cry is a long time I did it. Tonight I must massage my husband. I've been too busy and too stressed. My darling, if you have time, you can massage full body. But the person is sitting down watching television. You just go massage the head. You are saying you are important. The person is sitting down watching TV. You take his feet, massage his feet. You are saying, you care. Give him a rub on his shoulder. Is somebody listening? Little, little, little things. I used to do that for my husband a lot. He used to also do that for me a lot. Practical. Are we listening? Little things. Number five, I need to move very fast. Have I done one hour? It's my church. It's my church. I make myself the senior pastor. Dog is the assistant pastor. I have come to my son's church. Oh. Number five, forgiveness. My darling, every relationship goes through challenges. Every relationship goes through disagreements. People come to me, going to enter into premarital counseling. I ask them a question. And they confidently, happily, we've never quarreled before. I said, go and quarrel and come back. My darling, it's not about the quarreling. It's about the forgiveness. If during courtship, you have never learned to forgive in the marriage, you will never be able to forgive. As long as you were born by different parents, you grew up in different homes, you didn't grow up in the same vicinity. You didn't go to the same school. You didn't eat on the same dining table when you were growing up. Somebody ate on dining table with fork and knife. Somebody also ate in Iowa on the floor. Somebody stayed in hall and chamber with their parents and seven other siblings. You, since you were born, have had your own bedroom. My darling, by all means, there will be disagreements. You must learn to forgive each other. Forgiveness creates a deeper bond of friendship with your partner. Proverbs 17 verse 9. I'm reading the NLT. Proverbs 17 verse 9. Love prospers. 
when a fault is forgiven, love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. When you dwell on the same thing, something happened 25 years ago, you still are referring to it. My darling, when you forgive, you leave it. The fact that the person committed the same thing doesn't mean that you refer. And you did it 25 years ago, I forgave you. 20 years ago, I forgave you. 15 years ago, I forgave you. you today too. But well, it depends on the kind of offense. There are some offenses that you have to refer to it. Twenty-five years ago, disclaimer, he slept with your maid servant. You forgive. Fifteen years ago, with a cousin. Eight years ago, with a choir member. Five years ago, that one, dear, I give you the permission to refer. But there are some things, my darling. Life is short. Are you listening? As long as your wife is a human being, as long as your husband is a human being, they will make mistakes. Learn to forgive. Not forgiving separates close friends. Are you with me? Am I dialing some numbers? Are there some wives here who are very unforgiving? Eh? I'm talking to you. My darling, learn to forgive. He brought you a child. It's okay. Take the child. Is somebody listening? Anytime I said this, people said I was crazy. And that because it's never happened to me before. We who are ready for these things, it never happened to us. I said to somebody one day, if my husband ever made a mistake and went to have a child with somebody within the marriage, I will go to court, prove to the judge that the other woman is sick and needs to be taken to the psychiatric hospital. So that child is mine. I'm taking the child. No, but if you are in your right senses and you know that the man you are going to sleep with is a married man, would you sleep with that man? The gold in the marriage is mine. All the bank account is mine. The house is mine. So the child that comes out of the marriage is what? You like the bank account, but you don't like that. Are we listening? And I see men, women, I don't know, sometimes people think that I'm of a different world. We don't, we don't know our priorities. You are fighting. You don't want to see the unborn child. Meanwhile, you don't know your husband's bank account. Your name is not on. The land, your name is not on. The house, your name is not on. My darling, fight for that one. I don't know how to explain to people. Is somebody listening to me? Every bank account of my husband, my name is on. There's no house. There's no land that my name is not on. My darling, 
fight for that one. Somebody came to me on Valve Day. After I was done. Had a married man take care of her. Educated her. Paid her school fees to university level. After her school, the man said, I won't let you go. The woman said, let me go. Find my own. The man said, I won't let you go. 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 Had the first child. I won't let you go. I won't let you go. I won't let you go. Had the second child. Now she's come to me. She's confused. Meanwhile, the, the man deceived her that, oh, my wife is okay with it. By our tribe and our tradition, a man can marry, yes, according to our laws of Ghana, a man can marry as many wives as they want. That is, if it's a traditional marriage, but a type three marriage, the one we call the legal, the one that you wear white, is one wife, one husband. So now she's come to me. I am confused. I don't know whether to come out or not. After two children. I said, what are you doing, housewife? Say you're a big fool. When people come to me, they say me, I insult. I will insult you if you have. You don't have sense. I said you have two children. Meanwhile, you should see her spouse. You should see her hair. You should see her car keys. You don't have any business. I said, if anything should happen to the man today, the family members will say they don't know you. The first wife will say that she doesn't know you. What happens to your children? I said, before we talk, go establish yourself. Either get some job to do, get a shop. The man is rich. Let him establish you very well. So that if they say, hey, Jack, you can, you can take care of your two children. Is somebody listening to me? If you want to do the thing, do it well. You are going for somebody's husband. Do it well. My darling, I am not saying go for somebody's husband. Don't go and say, Mama Rita says. The wise people here, did I say that? Maybe the last one and I'll be done. When I'm invited again, I'll do part two. It's my church, so I can walk in any time. The last one, pray for your partner at all times. When you are happy, pray for him. Pray for her. When you are sad, pray for him, pray for her. When you are hurt in the relationship, pray for him, pray for her. When you are bitter and you feel like not forgiving him or her, pray for him, pray for her. What prayer does is that prayer brings you together. Job chapter 16, verse 20 and 21, reading from the NIV. 
Job chapter 16, verse 20 and 21. Do you still love me? Or oh, I've stepped on some toes, so you are angry with me. Job 16, verse 20. My intercessor is my friend. Are you listening? My intercessor, the one who prays for me, is my friend. As my eyes pour out tears to God, on behalf of a man, he pleads with God as one pleads for a friend. My intercessor is my friend. Sometimes without your partner even knowing that you are praying for him or you are praying for her, what happens is that the prayer brings you together. The prayer attracts you to each other. The prayer binds you together. The prayer glues you together. The prayer brings you together. Because you are praying for him and you are genuinely praying for him, even when he hurts you, you don't see it. Love covereth a multitude of sins. When she's genuinely praying for you, when she hates you, you don't even see. I am talking to you about building friendship in your relationship. This is something I have tried within this 38 years in marriage. It has worked for me. And I believe if you do the same, it will work for you. God bless you. So the next time, or when I have the opportunity, we will talk about laughing together in the relationship, getting away in the relationship, sharing bedrooms in the relationship, affirming one another each day in the relationship. And then exploring each other's interests if there are any questions. Go ahead. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. You feel my heart. With so much peace and joy. I would want somebody to read their questions for me. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. All right. Oh, I think we should clap our hands for our mommy. Our mommy has really preached from her heart practical things about friendship and marriage and relationship. What a blessing. So if you have a question, um, the ashes is, are going around with a basket to collect your question. You know, we have just a brief moment, about 20 minutes to take the questions. Then uh, Mama Rita will answer them as they come. So I'm going to read the first. Hey, this is about five questions at one. So let me read the first one. Does intimacy or romance still exist during old age in marriage? That's the first one. Maybe if you go ahead. 
I should ask you. Okay, the second question says that, how can you honor and receive from your husband after seeing his flaws? Yes. Then the third one is, okay, after this two, then. Maybe add the third one. The, the third question is that, when do you walk out of a marriage? Let me start with that one. When do you walk out of a marriage? You walk out of a marriage when the marriage becomes abusive. Number one, emotional abuse. Emotional abuse. The person is always insulting you. The person makes you feel you are nothing. Tells you you are nothing. Sometimes the emotional abuse can even be more than physical abuse. Some people have committed suicide out of emotional abuse. But before you come out of a relationship because of emotional abuse, um, seek counseling. Number two, the one that I would say don't look back is physical abuse. When a man hits you once, don't give him the opportunity to hit you a second time. And this time, let me talk about the men instead of the women. Why? Because I know some women are also very abusive, but generally um, it's 90% over 10%. Uh, are we okay? So for any man who is abusive, take this for me. The man is sick. His place is in the psychiatric hospital. They hit you once, they'll hit you a second, they'll hit you a third, they'll hit you a fourth, they'll hit you a fifth. I've seen men who will hit you Bring flowers, come and cry, apologize. They'll do it again. They'll hit you, bring you fried rice, bring you KFC, sleep with you once. They will do it again. A man that can hit you and hit you and hit you, that same man can kill you. If you read the newspapers, you see all the time where men have killed women. It didn't start with killing. It started with, the, with they being physically abusive. If you ask me, do you walk out when a man is cheating on you? Personally, 20 years ago, I would have said, walk out. But when we grow, we mature. If you can, and you can hold yourself, if a man cheats on you, stay in the relationship. You know why? They change. I have seen men who cheated on their wives later in life, they changed. So if the man is cheating on you, but is very responsible, taking care of the home, taking care of the children, providing for the home, has established you well, where are you going to? Where are you going to start from? Are we listening? I'm, I'm just speaking wisdom. I won't say this 20 years ago when I was younger. I always tell the women, I am not giving any man here the license. God doesn't give you the license to do that. If you are born again and you are cheating on your wife, stop. It's a sin and you will go to hell. But when I'm handling these issues, I say that assuming, and I want you to listen carefully to me, I'm speaking a lot of wisdom this evening. If you don't, you are not wise. You won't understand me. 
I always say that assuming we come from the other side, where the other side means that assuming you were born into a Muslim home, you didn't have the opportunity to be born again. You didn't have the opportunity to have the Bible. Where it says one wife, one husband, assuming you were born into a Muslim home and you were introduced to the Quran, where it gives the men the opportunity to marry four women, what would you do? Because it's the norm, you would accept it. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Am I speaking wisdom? I'm telling you, 20 years ago, I won't talk like this. I know a lot of people who have walked out of homes because the men were cheating. Much later, the men changed and the women regretted. Add a lot of prayer to it. Do what you are supposed to do as a woman. If it's too much for you and you think you can't, then you can walk out. But uh, for me, I think that you only walk out when the woman is very abusive. Other than abusive, don't walk out. Can you, can there be romance in the relationship after 38 years in marriage? Yes. I'm married for 38 years. There's still romance in my marriage. I still enjoy my marriage. Every day, I see my husband as a boyfriend. We are still courting in the marriage. What was the third? And how can you, how can you and receive from your husband after seeing his flaws? After seeing his flaws. It depends on the flaws you are talking about. I don't know the kind of flaws you are talking about. Is it flaws of he cheating on you? What kind of flaws? But everybody has a bat. Are we listening? Everybody has a bat. When you were caught in, you should have seen the flaws. Are the young people listening to me? When you are loving, don't only love with your heart. Love with your brains. A lot of you are too stupid when you are loving. There's nothing new in the relationship. Except for a few sick people who can, they, they know how to really comport themselves during courtship. They were never abusive. Even that, you see, you know, red flags, small, except that because you thought you were in love, you overlooked the red flag. So, if they are, can you honor a man who has flaws? Yes. Yes, because you also have flaws. There's no perfect human being. Everybody has a bat. Work on each other's bat. And 38 years after you married, you will still enjoy each other. Clap your hands, clap your hands. The, the next question we have is, do you or can you ask for privacy in marriage? Then the next question, please give me one word, ask a single lady. So, do you or can you ask for privacy in marriage? And then the next question is also, um, please give me one word as a single lady. That one I don't understand. I don't know which word you want to hear. Is it sorry? Is it please? Is it thank you? I don't know which word you want one word. But if there's anything you want to hear, add sense to your love. <laughs> A lot of us are not thinking. That's the truth. Um, the first question is, do you or can you ask for privacy in marriage? Yes. You can ask for privacy. Being together all the time makes the relationship boring. There are times my husband is praying on his own. There are times I pray on my own. There are times he decides, let me go for an all night, personal all night. And I allow him to go. There are times I have my own personal all night. Um, 
What kind of privacy? Oh, oh, okay. No, that one is not allowed. That one is not allowed in the relationship. Why should you put a password on your phone if there's nothing to hide? Where you are in the bathroom, your phone is ringing. You come out naked with soap on you. The next time, you will fall down. Are, are you listening? My phone is there. My husband goes into my phone if he wants to. And because he knows there's nothing I am hiding, he doesn't even go into my phone. My husband's phone is there. I know the password to his phone. I can go to his phone at any time. But because I know there's no secrets that he's hiding, I don't need to wake up at 2 a.m. My precious sleep. Go and check who has sent him a mail or who has sent him a message. Are we listening? Pardon? They can hold you. Uh, you, you take his finger and... Are we listening? So if that is the question, there must be no privacy. Recently, uh, recently, I spoke to the church when that madman came on social media and said, my husband slept with somebody for blood sacrifice for the church. I boldly spoke before the church for him. Can your wife speak for you if some fool comes and says your husband or you slept with somebody, can your wife defend you? And that is the question I asked the church. Can your wife defend you? I've been married for 38 years. Without me or apart from me, my husband has never picked any girl. Never seen the panties of any woman. Let alone a small girl. I can swear with my very life. I can swear with the blood inside of me. I can stand on the day I became born again and swear. That is why I can go anywhere if I have time and if I want to, to defend my husband. It's never happened, and it will never happen. In Jesus' name. My darling, if you are listening to me, bad times happen in the relationship, especially for the young men of God here. When you start growing, when the anointing increases, when the power increases, when you are gathering the crowd, that is when you get fools like that guy coming and saying things they don't know. That is when people who left the church, who are hurt and bitter, will come and say things who are, that are not true. Working it. Will your wife be able to defend you? Mm. Mm. So, please, whilst you are hiding your phone, And you are putting numbers on it, index numbers. Somebody's uh, common entrance index number, uh, B, C index number, they remember, they put it on their phone. You are sleeping. Your phone is under your pillow. You get cancer. Next question. Ne next quarter. The, the, next, <laughs> the next question. So how can I'll I... I'll tell you the joke about next Cora. <laughs> so how can I restore love in my relationship when my partner loses interest? How can I restore love in my relationship when my partner loses interest? As long as the partner is not in for divorce, you can restore love. 
There's no love that is still that can never be rekindled. First, why has your partner lost love? Number one, maybe you are disrespectful in the marriage. Your wife has lost love because you are not respecting her. You talk to her anyhow before the children. May servant is there. You don't care. You insult her. You insult your husband anyhow. They will lose love. Before you married, at the time she proposed to you, you were beautiful like me. Mm, mm. Me, I know I'm beautiful. I don't need anybody to tell me. My mirror tells me I'm beautiful. Are you listening? Ten years down the line, you've left yourself. You've become like a bullfrog seller. The woman will lose interest. The man will lose interest. They come to your house. Your house is smelling. The home is unkept. The bed is unkept. The bed sheet you sleep on with your husband. He hasn't been watched for a whole month. Certainly, the man will lose interest. The only reason why he's still in the marriage is because he's born again. But I tell the young people these days, during our time, when we became born again, there was nothing like divorce. We never had, I mean, divorce was not part of our syllables. Now it is. So if you are in the relationship and you think that the man has married you, the woman has married you, so you can do anything in the marriage, I'm telling you, even popes are divorcing in the marriage. Are we listening? Yeah. So, do find out first. When you yourself, you sit down, you know why she's lost interest. Even if it's the man and he's lost interest because of another woman, my darling, you can bring his heart. Your food, your talking, your dressing, the way you tidy up, if it's with another woman, get the woman's picture. Women, sit on the floor. Take the woman's picture and say, this picture, I bring enmity. Between this one and my husband, God, what has this one, this thing got that me I don't have from today? I defy them. That is it. Are we listening? Mm. There's so much you can do. There's so much you can do. Number one is prayer. There's no prayer that God doesn't hear and doesn't answer. There's something called the woman power. You have the right, you have the power. You have, all you need to do is to go before God. I always tell people, when I married my husband, my husband was one of those tough people. Tough. He believed himself. He believed his wisdom was more than King Solomon. My darling, I used prayer to make him like Cotton Wu. Next question. <laughs> Clap your hands. <laughs> All right, the, the next question is, does age matter in relationship or marriage? I, if yes, um, what is the ideal age difference? I think I, I treated it a bit. Yeah. So, for, for, for the man, if the man is older than the woman, one, two, up to about 14, it's not too bad. Some time ago, I, I left it at 12, but up to about 14 years is not too bad. Are you listening? Mm. Women mature very fast. I've met people that the man is older than the woman 12 years. 
If they don't tell you, you won't know. Are we okay? So, last year, I said 12 years. But this year, I've taken it to 40 years. Uh, why? Because of the kind of um, cases I handle. Are we listening? So, but for the woman, if the woman must be older than the man, it shouldn't be more than five years. Even five years, um, but you get recently, I met a lady, and I even asked her that, Charlie, you need to pray about your marriage. Why? She has her first degree, she has her second degree, she's finished her master's about five years ago. When you see her, you think she's some SSS girl. She looks so tiny, so young. She's about 28. When you see her and they say she's 16, 18, you believe. So a person like that can get married to a younger man who is five years younger. Are, are we listening? But you must know yourself before you get married. When I was marrying, my husband is two years older than me. But when you look at my face, my face looked older than him. I had to work on myself for me to, I don't know whether I'm looking younger than him or we look the same, I don't know now. Are you listening? But then I looked older. I remember when I was pregnant with uh, my daughter here, she would bring greetings at the end of everything. Um, Reverend Lawyer, Naka, Nana Kusia Kranchiankra. We call her Reverend Naka. I was 24. I had gone to the hospital, going to do card for the first time, you know, Kolebu. So they asked me, How old are you? And I said, I'm 24. Then the one who was doing card, Ghanaians can be rude, eh? Asked me again, how old are you? I said, I am 24. Then she looked up, spoke in Ghan. Can you bear while in your back or a boo? Now, being your bonny, ye, in your back, chair, I feel in your year, Benny and Cheno. If you come to the hospital and they ask you how old you are, instead of mentioning your correct age, then you are reducing it. How can, why would I reduce my age at 24? I'm sure for her, I looked about 30 at the time. Meanwhile, I was only 24. So I looked, I looked, you know, matured. My face looked grown. But over and he too, his face looked like some baby. When, when I'm with him, you think that I've gone for my younger brother. Meanwhile, he's older than me. But over the years, I worked on myself, my looks, my dresses, my hairstyle, you know. Swagger mama, swagger mama. So you, you must know all these things. If you are married to an older man, a man who is 14 years older, 12 years older, you must dress up like, you know, a matured woman. And when you're also married to a younger man, you must know how. I've met so many people that the woman is... Uh, five years older, and if they don't tell you, you won't know. But I think that anything more than five years for the woman is too much. You, you, you would grow older than the man, because naturally the men, the women always look older. So I hope have, I've answered your question. Yeah, mm. you have, we have the last question here. Please, I want to know what to do in a relationship when only one of the partner is giving love and anything while the other remains indifferent. So I hope that if both of you are here, if your partner is not here, go and play uh, my message to them. Love is a two-way affair. Love is a two-way affair. 
if one person is showing love and the other is not showing love, the person gets tired. But it also depends on the definition of love. Are we listening? Your showing love means that saying I love you. I'm only giving an example. Your showing love means that I love you. The truth is that for a lot of Ghanaian men, it's just the current, Nanako's uh, your, um, your generation, generation what? They are Gen Z. So um, it's the Gen Zs and then even the millennials that are doing well. But any, any generation above the millennials do not know how to say I love you unless they are trained in the relationship. Why? Because of the kind of parents we had. We never had our fathers telling our mothers, I love you. We, 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 we think that when you say I love you, then I don't know. So you, you grew up in a home where you heard your father telling your mother, I love you. So it's very easy for you to tell your husband, I love you but your husband is not saying it back. Or you are the man you grew up um, in the home where I love you was like drinking water. And the woman grew up, you, you get what I'm saying? So what you do is you teach each other and then you train each other. Let him understand that this is what I expect. This is what I want. Some people might not say I love you, but they say I love you in other ways in other areas by giving you a gift, by, you know, so it depends on your definition of love. But then, love should be a two-way affair. It's not one-sided. When it's one-sided, the love becomes still. One person gets so tired and overworked by she showing love all the time or he showing love all the time. You must learn how to say, I love you, you must learn how to do things for each other. You must learn how to appreciate each other. Um, on his birthday, you give him a gift. On your birthday, he must give you a gift. Valentine's Day, he gives you a gift. You must also give him a gift. It's a, if it's a tradition that he gives you a gift Christmas, you must also learn to give a gift Christmas. I mean, you must do it two-way affair. God bless you. Have you been blessed? So, so blessed. So, so, so. Oh, let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands. Let's appreciate the woman of God. Let's appreciate our mother. Shall we rise up? Three prayers and we are done. The first one we are going to pray for every unmarried person here. There are some people here that are waiting to be married. We are praying that may today bring them a miracle. May today bring the right man into their lives, right woman into their lives. May they not be married to, to sick people. May they not be married to abusive people. May they not be married to people who are not givers. May God bring them the right people. And then our second prayer will be praying for all married people that they would enjoy their marriage, they would enjoy their love. If for any reason the marriage is sick, we are praying healing into their marriage. And then the third is anybody who is married here without a child. We are praying that a year today, a baby will be crying in their homes. So our first prayer, so our first prayer, we are praying for the unmarried ones. If you are here and you are married, you are praying for everyone here who is not married, that God will bring the right person their way. That this year, out of this conference, there must be so many testimonies, so many marriages, so many weddings. So, are you ready? Yes. 
Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. I am praying. I am praying for everyone who is not married. For everyone who is not married. I am praying for myself. I am praying for myself. If I am not married. If I am not married. That God. That God. A year by this time. A year by this time. Let me also be called a mister. Let me also be called a mister. Let me also be called a missus. Let me also be called a missus. Let me also have my husband by my side. Let me also have my husband by my side let me also have my wife by my side let me also have my wife by my side open my eyes lord open my eyes lord open my heart lord open my heart lord that i will not make a mistake that i will not make a mistake that the single ones will not make a mistake that the single ones will not make a mistake that the lord will lead them that the Lord will lead them to the right people. To the right people. Open your mouth Open and pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray right now, my dear. The Lord is in our midst tonight. The Bible declares, Ask the thing and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. This evening you want to ask the Lord uh, that a year today when we come for the blessed marriage conference, uh, may my husband be my, by my side. Uh, May my wife be by my side. Uh, anything that is not allowing me, oh God, uh, to meet my Boaz tonight, uh, I decree and I declare that Lord open my eyes. Uh, let your favor fall upon me. Uh, let your favor locate me, oh God. Uh, cause me, oh God, uh, that a man will locate me. Uh, let a woman locate me. Uh, oh Lord, this evening uh, I pray for the favor. May I be favored, oh God. If you are a woman, you are saying, oh God, favor my cause. Every single woman, ask the Lord to favor you. Anything, oh God, that the enemy has placed upon you, that is not making the men to see you. Anything, oh God, that is not making the men to locate you. You are saying, oh God, in this year 2024, Cause me to shine. 2024. Cause me to shine. As a single lady. Let the favor of the Lord. Locate me. Child of God. We are praying for the married people. Of Jesus. That if there is any relationship here. That is sick. Yes Lord. If there is any relationship here. Lacking joy. Happiness. Peace. Jesus. Respect for one another. Mm. We are praying that after this conference, yes, happy marriage conference, yes, happy blessed yes, marriage Lord. conference, that their marriage will be blessed. In the name of Jesus. It will be blessed with happiness. Yes, Lord. It will be blessed with joy. Yes, Lord. It will be blessed with happiness. Yes, Lord. So the single ones, just like the married people prayed for you, you are also praying for the married ones that they will live here with healing in their marriages in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Open your mouth and begin to pray right now. If you are here with your spouse, you want to hold hands together and ask the Holy Ghost to take charge over this marriage. If you are here with your partner, hold hands. You are praying for agreement. You are praying for oneness. You are asking the Lord to spice your marriage up. Today you have had a lot of things. Things that you need to do to spice your marriage up. Wherever you are lacking, as a couple, you want to cry unto the Lord. And you are saying, Holy Spirit, I cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it on our own. We need you, O oh God, to release your grace. We need you, O oh God, to release your favor. We need you, O oh God, to release agreement. Let the Lord release oneness. Let the Lord spice your marriage up. Rabba da 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 baba. Aperia da 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 baba baba. What is it that does not bring agreement into the marriage? What is it that brings the confusion? What is it that does not bring happiness and joy? 
you want to ask the Holy Spirit uh, that the Holy Spirit will release that grace, uh, the grace of agreement, uh, the grace of respect, uh, the grace of loving each other, the grace of praying for each other, the grace of sticking together. The Bible declares uh, a family that prays together, grows together, a union that prays together, sticks together. Child of God, uh, you can do it. Uh, it is possible. Uh, if others have done it uh, for 38 years, uh, there is nothing that you cannot do. Uh, the oil of 38 years uh, is in the house tonight. Uh, as you tap into it, uh, that oil is coming into your life. Uh, as you tap into it, uh, your marriage is going to be spiced up. Randa da ba 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 ba. Ake madosh kede be be be. Rapados kata ka ba ba. Abiri andodobo. Uri badus kada ba ba ba. The grace of the Lord, uh, the mercy of the Lord, uh, is pouring right now. Uh, His grace is sufficient. Uh, the grace to love each other. In the name of Jesus. Whilst we are praying for the last one, if you are married and you are expecting um, marriage this year or soon, take a sacrifice and say, with this sacrifice, I seal up my prayer. If you are here and you are married and you want peace, oneness, agreement, the Apostle General and Mama Rita kind of marriage. That's right. A marriage of 38 years, mm. still with Ruma, still with love, mm. still with respect for one another, still with peace. Still, you are saying, God, bring us this kind of marriage whilst we are praying for the last one. Our last one, we are praying for any marriage here that has not been blessed with a child. We are saying, God, have mercy. Mercy. Open the womb of any every woman, any woman here. Yes, Lord. Increase the sperm count mm. of any man here. We are praying Jesus. that out of this conference, yes, Lord. a year by this time, yes, Lord. There will be babies Amen. crying in the homes in the of people. Of if you are also here like that, whilst you are praying, or you are praying for a daughter or a sister or somebody without a child, you can also take a seed, bring it, and then I want you to know, a year by this time, God will give you a miracle. Shall we pray? Open your mouth right now. You are praying for a sister or a brother who is looking for the fruits of the womb. You are praying for a congregation member who has been married for years and is looking for the fruits of the womb. You are saying, oh Lord, remember my sister, oh God. Remember my sister, oh God. Place a child in her womb. The Bible declares that children are a blessing. If children are a blessing, then the Lord can bless everyone with it, O oh God. I don't know what has caused the delay, O oh God. But this evening, the Lord is in the house. He's releasing blessing of children. The Lord is in the house. He's releasing children. There is an outpouring, O oh God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Child of God, open your mouth. Pray and ask the Lord to bless your womb. We're with children. Uh, pray and ask the Lord uh, to release lift children your voice. over lift your, your voice. life. Uh, lift your voice. Uh, pray. Pray. Let there be a release. 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 The fruits of the womb. The fruits of the womb. Let there be a release. Let there be a release. A year by this time. A year by this time. Testimonies. 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 Coming out. Come on Marriages. Now. Marriages. Coming out. Coming out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. Coming out. Coming out. Pray. Release pray. right release. now. Let, right there now, let there be a release. Marital bliss. Marital, bliss. Marital joy. Marital, joy. Marital peace. Marital let there be a release. Be a Any release. trouble marriage. Any let there be a healing. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. The Lord is listening. The Lord is, the Lord is answering. The, the rain is falling down now. The rain is falling down now. The rain of joy. The rain of peace. 
the rain of happiness, the rain of long lasting bliss is falling down now. The rain of babies, the rain of marriages is falling down now. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Miracles are being released, miracles are being released. Testimonies are being released. A year by this time, when we come again, we shall have testimonies of people carrying their babies. Testimonies of people who married out of this conference. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice. Lift up 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 the blessing of fruitfulness, the blessing of peace, the blessing of joy in our homes, in our marriages, in a trouble marriage. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. Let there be healing in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands to the Lord. Clap your hands and celebrate. Celebrate the reign of the blessings of God. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Clap your hands and give the Lord a shout. I said a shout. I said a shout. I said a shout. What a blessing. What a blessing. The woman is loaded. So much. You know, we have taken off well. Next year is not going to be easy. We have taken off like British Airways taking off. Because the pilots knew, the experience knew. Clap your hands for this woman of God. The anointing of the Apostle General. Ah, what a blessing. What a blessing. Friendship in marriage and relationship. And she was saying she has so many points. She had to, you know, give us just a gist. What a blessing. Clap your hands for yourself. For being patient. I didn't say anybody sleeping. I can see that you are wild for the blessing. You are wild to have a blessed marriage. Clap your hands for yourself. Hallelujah. God bless you so much, Mama Rita. God bless you for this, pouring out your heart to us, blessing us so much, opening our eyes to things that hitherto were blind to. We thank you for even coming. Your presence alone is a very great blessing for us. I mean, when you entered my office, I was so elated. I was so happy. I was so excited because I know that you have opened the door. And this December, we are bringing the Apostle General. <laughs> Makata Yandala Bayali. You have opened the door. You have opened the door. And I know that you are going with a good report. And I know that your report will favor us. Because this is your church. This is your house. Hallelujah. Can we be, can we take our seats? We want to welcome Reverend Naka to come and say a few words. <laughs> oh, clap your hands. Honor, honor the firstborn of the Mama Rita. Oh, if that was for me, do a better one unto the Lord. Oh, you don't sound excited at all to be here. As if you are not satisfied with their meal. Oh, amen. Just a short one. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God is about to do for those who love him. Now, because you have come to spend your Sunday night here, it means that you love God. It means that eye has not seen what the Lord is about to do for you. Only those here received it. Ear has not heard about your wedding announcement. Oh, eye has not seen the pregnancy of your twins. Oh, they have not seen the first class. They have not seen you in your graduation gown. Oh, they have not heard that you are about to go for holidays in Disney World with your family and your children. Oh, they have not seen your new car. They have not seen your wedding ring. I am here to prophesy to you that by the end of this year, the Lord is about to smile on you. 
He is going to give you a testimony. He is putting dancing on your feet. Oh, your enemies will hear about your testimony. And they will ask, which God do you serve? Hey, they will hear and they will say, can you pray for me? They will hear and they will ask you, which altar did you go? And you will say, it is the Lord. It is the Lord. I declare that you are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. Wow. One of these days, we are going to bring Reverend Naka here. One of these days. One of these days. Singles retreats. We are going to bring her here. What a blessing. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for taking your time out to attend the Blessed Marriage Conference. God bless you. I believe that your time here has not been wasted at all. But it is a time that you have invested for miracles in time to come. And I believe that a year by this time, when you come again for the Blessed Marriage Conference, you will testify that after attending this conference, you had a restoration of joy. You had a restoration of peace. You had a restoration of harmony. You had a restoration of a relationship that was on the verge of collapsing. But when you attended, there was a revival. And I believe that it shall be so in Jesus' name. Amen. After we close, pastors, please don't be in a hurry to go. We have a short reception upstairs. So um, some of the leaders will direct you to go. And then I'll bring Mama Rita to spend a short time with us before she leaves. Amen. I want us to give an offering before we go. I believe that you have sown some seeds. But the Bible says that in the morning, sow thy seed. In the evening, withhold not your hand. For you do not know which one, either this one or that one, shall yield a fruit. So, you want to take something to sow. You see, the, the, the words we have heard today are great words, are wise words. And the Bible says that a wise man will hear and will increase in learning. I have taken a lot of um, wisdom keys and out of those keys, I've seen so many things I can even glean from it. All right, so as you sow into it, God is going to even open your eyes to see more than you saw today, to hear more than you heard today, which is going to make your life better than it is today. Clap your hands to the Lord. I said clap your hands if you are excited about this. Amen. So please take an offering and we can be on our feet to give our last sacrifice before we live here. And I believe that it's not going to be, our lives are not going to be the same. If you are ready with your sacrifice, I want to pray. I want to pray. There's going to be a short praise as we gave. And we're going to come from the back to give. Are we ready? Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege that we have had to spend with a great woman of God. A woman that you have graced with wisdom. A woman that has endurance, that has tenacity, that has gone through the test of time as far as ministry, relationship, marriage is concerned. Tonight we have heard so many things and we are about to sow into whatever we have heard. Father, as we sow these seeds, it is our prayer that we are not just hearers, but doers of whatever we have heard. For it is in the doing that blessings come into our lives. Let these seeds that we are sowing go through time and space to bring to us the testimonies we need and the miracles that we need. That a year by this time we shall testify that we went for a conference and that turned things around in our favor. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You are highly lifted up, awesome God. You are highly lifted up, mighty God. Oh, you are highly lifted up, awesome God. You are highly lifted up, mighty. You are highly lifted up, say. You are highly lifted.
lifted up. Awesome God. Can we be on our feet, please? Yes, you are highly lifted up. You are highly lifted, says you are highly lifted. Awesome God. Yes, you are highly lifted up. You are the reason why I lift my hands. Why I lift my voice. Why I sing to you. Oh, you are the reason. You are the reason. I am here to say, I am here to say, so because of you. So because of you. Yes, you are the reason. You are. You are the reason. Oh, you are. You are the reason. You are the reason. You are the reason. You are. God, we love you. Say, we declare everlasting love. Father, we declare, Father, that we love. Oh, we declare, we declare everlasting love for you. Lasting love for you. Clap your hands to the Lord. If you are blessed and you have enjoyed yourself at the Blessed Minds Conference, give the Lord a shout. I want us to share the grace quickly. Immediately, please, pastors, you climb up. So, please, let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives, and we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Sozo. 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 God bless you. Have a blessed week. Pastors, please let's go up. The Sozo International Family Church at Denta under the auspices of our prophet, Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Fiao and Lady Pastor Annie M. F. Fiao presents the Blessed Marriage Conference 2024. Hooray! This is a conference where you shall be empowered for marriage relationship and revitalized to enjoy a blissful and long-lasting marriage life. The conference is on Sunday the 18th of February 2024 and the time is 5 p.m. sharp. We are honored this year to have the Premier Lady of the Royal House Chapel International, Reverend Miss. Rita Crunchy Ankara as the speaker. You, you cannot afford to miss this conference. Locate the Sozo International Family Church at a Denta new site behind the Zoe Royal Hospital. For more inquiries, call 0243-239-534 or visit www.sozoifc.org. The Blessed Marriage Conference. Building a blissful marriage by the word. Be there. Be there. Be there. The Sozo International Family Church at Denta under the auspices of our prophet, Reverend Dr. Emmanuel Fiao and Lady Pastor Annie M. F. Fiao presents the Blessed Marriage Conference 2024. Hooray! This is a conference where you shall be empowered for marriage relationship and revitalized to enjoy a blissful and long-lasting marriage life. The conference is on Sunday the 18th of February 2024 and the time is 5 p.m. sharp. We are honored this year to have the Premier Lady of the Royal House Chapel International, Reverend Miss. Rita Crunchy Ankara as the speaker. You, you cannot afford to miss this conference. Locate the Sozo International Family Church at a Denta new site behind the Zoe Royal.